Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. After reading Demon Copperhead a couple of months ago, I kind of fell in love with Barbara Kingsolver's writing, and I vowed that by the end of the year I must try and read at least two more Kingsolver books. The Poisonwood Bible is also a friend of mine's favourite book, so it felt like the logical choice for the one I should read next. The Poisonwood Bible weaves an intricate tale of the Price's family's journey to the Belgian Congo, showcasing the profound impact of their experiences there on their lives. Engaging in multiple perspectives, the story is told through the voices of the four Price daughters and their mother, offering extremely diverse perspectives on the events unfolding around them. The book covers around 40 years of the Price's family from around the 1940s to the 1980s. The Price family consists of Reverend Nathan Price. He's the head of the Price family. Nathan is a stubborn and dogmatic Baptist missionary. He is determined to convert the local colony's people to Christianity, but fails to understand their customs and culture. He is unwavering in his beliefs and his refusal to adapt. It's been a while since I've read a book in which I have hated a character so much, but my god, did I hate this man. Next up we have Orleana Price, Nathan's wife. You could say that Orleana is the primary narrator of this story. But overall, everything is structured pretty evenly amongst the Price women. She is initially submissive to her husband's will, but as the story progresses, she slowly becomes disillusioned with his actions. Orleana is burdened with guilt and regret as she witnesses the destruction caused by her husband's mission. Next up, we have Rachel Price, the eldest daughter. Rachel is a materialistic and self-centered teenager. She struggles to adapt to the harsh conditions of the Congo, often clashing with her family. Rachel's journey involves personal growth and a shift in her priorities as she starts to realise the strength of relationships over material possessions. Next up is Leah Price. Now, Leah Price is the most empathetic and compassionate of all the Price sisters. She is eager to please her father and initially joins in with her father's mission. At the start, she shares his aims and ideals. However, over time, she starts to question her father's ideology. She becomes more independent and develops a strong connection with the Colonesian people. Next up is Ada Price. Ada is Leah's twin sister. She is physically disabled and suffers with hemiplegia. Ada possesses a really sharp intellect and has a really interesting way of looking at the world. Ada initially struggles with feelings of inadequacy, but eventually embraces her own strengths and abilities. She becomes a very keen observer and commentator on the events unfolding around her. And finally, Ruth May Price. The youngest of the Price sisters, Ruth, is vibrant and innocent. Her youth and innocence really allows her to throw herself into the culture and community of the colonies and people. And there you go, that is the Price family. The themes in this book are vast, and I mean really, really, really vast. It took me quite a long time to write down everything that popped into my head as I was reading this that was a kind of theme within it. So this is going to take some time, there's going to be a lot of edits, but I'm going to rattle through them. So we have colonialism and imperialism, cultural identity and a clash of cultures, religion and faith, feminism and gender dynamics, environmentalism and ecological responsibility, post-colonialism and national identity, guilt, redemption, forgiveness, abuse of authority, loss, grief, healing, coming of age and identity formation, political unrest and social change. We've got nature versus nurture, morality, resilience and survival, cultural appropriation and ethical responsibility, language and communication, and finally legacy and intergenerational impact. But as vast as that list of themes are, they never for one minute bog down the story being told. All I can say is that Barbara Kingsolver's blending is masterful. After reading two of Kingsolver's books now, I can tell you that her superpower as a writer is the ability to explore the personal, the intricate, the small, the idiosyncratic with her characters, while simultaneously exploring huge, massive political themes. Again, it is just masterful. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked, the writing is just stunning. It flows beautifully and is utterly engaging. It's flowery where it needs to be. You get a real sense of place and location throughout. Just wonderful. The structure is brilliant. It jumps around a lot from the different perspectives of the mother and the daughters, but it was such a smart choice to use those multiple perspectives to tell this story. The character development is stunning, simply stunning. The depth of the characters, they journey, they go on, and how they change, how they grow, 
is just fantastic. The way we can see their environment, the culture around them, slowly changing their beliefs, slowly changing the way they think and feel, how the political system around them is changing and making them engage. The environment that they've moved to has impacted them in ways they will never ever be able to forget. And this book is also really really funny. So many laugh out loud moments. Again, Barbara Kingsolver, like Demon Copperhead, has this beautiful ability to blend. There is humour within this book without ever overtaking the drama within it, without ever overtaking or overshadowing the themes and the message of it. And finally, I just love the story of this book, if you couldn't tell already. It's not full of like twists and turns and things like that. It moves in a way that kind of in some instances is quite predictable, but it's not really about that. It's a character study and a cultural study, and we are learning the impact of cultures colliding, and it is done in such a beautiful way. What? didn't I like? Nothing really. I can't really think of anything I actively disliked. There are a couple of things I'm going to talk about, but I wouldn't consider them to really exist within the dislike category. Firstly, the plot was fairly easy to predict. Not everything, no way, not everything. There are loads of things that surprised me, loads of details in the relationships, where people ended up, how things went, that I really could not predict. But overall, when you start reading this book, you do get a sense of this is going to head in that trajectory. This is probably what's going to happen. And in that way, the book didn't really surprise me. However, it's not about that. I think Barbara Kingsolver has written this in a way so that you're kind of meant to guess that's where it's going, but you are going to learn and grow with these characters throughout that journey. It's not really about the destination. It's not really about the twists and turns that happen along the way. It's just about us spending time with these characters and seeing them grow and seeing how the culture that surrounds them changes them. And yeah, so that's why it's not really a dislike, but I, I'm going to put it up as a thing that I was a bit like, yeah, it was fairly easy to predict. And the next thing is that this is a 615 page book. And there were two times, two times throughout the entirety of those 615 pages that I felt like it could have used a slight edit. Only a slight one. Just, yeah, a couple of moments. And that was probably more down to my mood than the writing itself. But a couple of moments where I felt myself just going, yeah, I'd like to shift perspective now. But only a couple of times, uh, really minimal, and didn't impact my enjoyment of the book whatsoever. I thought this book was utterly fantastic. I'm going to give it five stars out of five. Barbara Kingsolver has now given me two five star reads. She's on a hell of a streak. So I've now read two books by Barbara Kingsolver that I would consider five stars. So obviously I have to pick another one of hers up just to see if she is actually incredible across the board and might possibly become my new favourite author. So I'm going to let you decide for me. I would like you to suggest what you think the next book from Barbara Kingsolver's back catalogue should be that I read. Please comment below and whatever seems to get the most people, the most hits in that sense, uh, then that's the next one I'm going to pick up. Have you read this book, The Poisonwood Bible? If so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Also, please let me know that in the comments below. I want to say thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you're well and I will see you all on the next one.